guys, Dustin here, and today we are taking a look at the SIG P320, the M18 version. The one now adapted by the military. I've had several of you guys want to know my thoughts on it. Finally got one, we've got a, a one borrowed from a customer, so we're gonna go through it all, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But first, we wanna thank our sponsor. You make sure that you check out Grizzly Targets. You guys know I love shooting steel, and Grizzly Targets make some great ones. Reactive ones, static ones, dueling trees, and you can even build your own. They just sell the parts and the bases and all, and the coolest thing is all the bases, they're galvanized. So you just throw them out there at the range and just set them and forget them. They're gonna last longer than anything else. Use code TOP10 for 10% off when you go to grizzlytargets.com. Now all this talking about it makes me wanna start shooting, so let's shut up and shoot. All right, so downrange, I have my Grizzly Targets. It's the beast with the dual vitals. We got a video on it, but I love it's reactive, but you have a three inch center that you have to shoot through. What I did is I put the uh, 50 millimeter Firebird target on it, so it's reactive. I've never done this, I just always wanted to. Let's see if we can get it. It's got like thread in the needle. <laughs> that was awesome! And now there's one on the other side. <laughs> Ah, pretty cool. I found the ammo that this thing likes. We'll go over that in a second. Sweet. All right, so on this SIG, at first I didn't think it was that accurate, but I found the ammo that it did like and it was accurate, but it does handle well. Um, the ergonomics are good, okay? It's not like, you know, I, I'm partial to like the VP9 that really fits your hand like a, it was molded clay, but this one leaves nothing to complain about, especially if you're comparing it to the old school M9. All right, and here's my warning for you guys. Don't just take what the military and police uses as the Bible has to be gun the best one. That's not always how it works. Politics and budgets and all that mix into it sometimes. That's what I did. My very first gun was like, you know, the Beretta M9. And now after handling a lot of ever, other guns, I'm like, that thing is big, bulky, crappy trigger, safety. I didn't like any of it. But this one's better, this one's better. Now, the first thing I noticed though was just that safety. That stinking safety is, I don't I don't care for safeties, honestly, on, uh, on carry defensive guns. You're going to have to train thousands and thousands of rounds, okay, maybe hundreds, just to be comfortable with always disengaging that safety. It has to be a way of life, or else if you take a serious defensive pistol class, you'll notice at least once you're going to go to draw and present and safety still on. That could cost you your life if you're not, you know, if, if you're not training to overcome that. So it's just a second nature. You cannot be thinking about that when someone's trying to hurt you. So if you do this, what I was, I was practicing a lot of dry fire earlier. Every time I dry fired, I'd flip the safety on as well to be able to know that when I present out. Now, the good thing about the safety though, is it, it leaves a nice shelf for you to rest your thumb on. So when you go into a position, if you have that habit of getting into position and keeping your thumb on that safety, it'll help give you something to help ride the recoil. However, the safety, uh, it's, it's not too big, not too small, but the position of it in relationship to your slide stop, it's kind of annoying. At first I was like, man, I don't even think I can reach it with that stupid safety in the way. But with, with a little work, you can, and, and your slide stop is usable as a slide release if you want to. But in all honesty, I'd probably just be grabbing, yes, I even grabbed the dot. Some of you get mad when I do that, but if your dot can handle the recoil of a slide, <laughs> Tugging on it's not going to hurt it either. So the trigger's decent. It's not wonderful. It's not match grade. It's a decent uh, defensive pistol trigger. You do have a little bit of slack there. It's, it's almost more like play. It just just kind of how it wiggles. Um, there's no. I mean, I mean, it's around six pounds. Let me give it a nice fair tug. You have a little bit of traveling mush there and then it breaks. So it's not like you hit a solid wall after the mush and it breaks. It's just, you, you, you mush through it and then it breaks. But it's not, it's not bad. Uh, for a defensive handgun, it's, it's perfectly fine. I just get picky because I'm a trigger snob and I like taking long range precision shots, which isn't as practical, but it is fun. Now on disassembly, that's something uh, with good and bad. We're gonna take it down, we're gonna throw our lever here and it will push right off without having to dry fire it. So that's nice. Oh, there's just something rattling in there. Uh, 
It's a striker. There it is. There it is. Okay, it's all good. It just caught me off. Squirrel! Okay, no. <laughs> so this is the first time I've had trouble reassembling a modern pistol. Uh, and it says in the manual how you have to do, have the recoil spring, making sure that this oval is straight up and down. It's not like a round one, okay? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to demo just putting it back a little bit crooked so I know that that we will uh, demo demonstrate it fine because it has to pass through this little chamber area here and there's not much uh, forgiveness for it and if it's a little misaligned we'll show you what happens and then we'll see if also that little trigger issue shows up as well all right see how that is is, is protruded we're gonna lock the slide and now look at that funkiness that funkiness is not supposed to be there it's not supposed to be sticking out like that uh, so okay it is working though the trigger did reset but it actually kind of stings once it, once you get it aligned. So I'm going to push this around. I'm going to use the magazine because when I do get it, all of a sudden it kind of snaps because of the spring. There it goes. And now it's in there and it's all good and aligned. So it's okay. Just, just make sure that you check it and you have to have it perfectly aligned. Just something a little persnickety. Now also with the trigger, and I'm going to try to duplicate that now. I have several times that when I put it back together, I'm going to pull the trigger a little bit. Okay. When I put it back together, that trigger wouldn't reset. And I did it that time. All right, we're gonna slide this back on and put our lock in and trigger no worky. So the trigger is like dead now and, and it won't work. So if you put it back together, if you had manipulated the trigger on takedown, you hear that? When I pick the slide lock up, now it works again. So just be careful about that. Don't put your gun back together without testing it and you'll be okay. Now let's shut up and shoot. So we're gonna just shoot a little few groups here. We're, this is our 25 yard line. Um, we have, okay, this is just some Reman uh, Angel Fire, 147s possibly. Uh, we're just gonna go for that one on the left. Let's do a little five shot group, see what it looks like. Okay, that started off really well. We had three rounds, there's just a little low. It makes me wonder if when I re-mounted uh, this Delta Point, if I dropped it down a little bit. We had put the uh, the rear side on just recently, but I wanna try some Syntec. We're gonna go on the target to the right, see what that looks like. tied a group but still adequate uh like i said we'll get we're gonna scoot back to 50 in a little bit and use some real high-end stuff and see what that does but on the optic itself uh well you have a footprint of course and the m18 comes from like a delta the delta point footprint uh you, it's shield that surprised me and i think it's the sig romeo pro you can fit all those on it and you know, I, I was really surprised the Delta Point because in the industry, uh, at least in the past, the Delta Point isn't the most robust. And uh, for, for military use, I was just like, what? But they had the contract with Leupold and they went from there. The site itself is kind of awkward where the button to turn it on and off is inside. So you are blocking your red dot as you want to adjust it. But at the top and bottom, when it's the highest and the uh, the brightest or the lowest dimmest setting, uh, it'll blink a little bit which tells you at the end of your uh, selection but also is kind of annoying because you have to wait for it to stop blinking to keep scrolling anyhow uh, it, that's your on and off button but it does have a shake awake uh, the uh, Delta Point does have this little rear sight insert that you can put in here but it's not co-witnessing at all it is going to need a tire front sight post so your suppressor type one to be able to use that and you can just tell it's it's Yes, it's milled for the red dot optics, but it's really kind of high in comparison to some other guns. So I would love to see that a little lower or just a lower profile sight, but it does work. If you're going to do concealed carry and stuff like this, it's kind of like a little bit larger Glock 19. I did throw this O-Light on this because you have a works holster and this, this holster just, yeah, this is going to be a nice little concealment package. And you know, you'll have that full size, what is these, uh, 17 round mags, so it's a flush fitting, or you have the 21 round mags, which I thought was pretty stinking 
stink and cool. It came with two 21 round mags out of the package, um, but they are going to be pricey. They run like 50 bucks a piece. And so that is the rest of that rundown there. So it's up to you. You know, you have the ambidextrous safety as well. So that makes me wonder, you know, and you can also all move your magazine release to the other side. So you lefties will be in good shape there. Now I want to shoot at 50 yards. So I haven't tried this at 50 yards at all, but I did it at 25 and this ammo from Detroit Ammo Company, it's with a Lehigh Extreme Penetrator. It's, it's their breast cancer awareness uh, ammo. Hopefully it's still in stock if you see it and you can support them, but <laughs> super awesome, accurate stuff. But I've heard mixed reviews that the SIGs don't perform too well after 25 yards. There's only one way to find out. Going for the big gong. Definitely a hit. Oh, that looked good. Yep. Oh, in the same group. Right with the other guy. Same group. Much more than five, but let's keep shooting. I see an oval like this. We're gonna go have, to, have to go down and look though because pure copper rounds don't leave a big splatter like lead does. So that was pretty good. And uh, honestly, when I was shooting, I was like, I, I could tell when I kind of broke it a little high and a little low. So we have eight rounds right here. But for the if if I was really on a bench rest or something, we could really keep all four of them in something like that. I could just tell from my trigger press. But even then, that's a nice group. Now, a uh, final reminder, that's the all the PIG 320 series. You can take out this whole fire control group, the serial numbers on this, and you can get aftermarket frames. So that if you don't like the frame and if you want smaller or more competitive, Competitive. There's a lot of different ones out there. So I, once I found the ammo that it likes, I started to like the gun a little bit more too. Um, what MSRP was around 600 bucks, and so you can, of course, you're gonna add the red dot on because we all love red dots, right? I, I, I'm sure addicted to it. Thanks for watching today, guys. Having fun on the range. Okay, I love you. Bye bye. Did you see that? Come on, Nasi! Come on, Nasi! Yeah. I came in like a wrecking ball! Yeah! yeah.